Congressman Biggs, we want to transition now to another topic impacting um, Arizona specifically, Maricopa County, and potentially the country, and that is this audit that's going on. Uh, you and others have called on a top uh, Justice Department official to allow the um, audit to continue um, unimpeded. What are your concerns there? Well, the first concern I have is the person that leads the Civil Rights Division that's writing this letter to Maricopa County, uh, excuse me, to the Arizona State Senate, is Pamela Carlin. And you remember her from testimony uh, during the bogus impeachment where she was at, she made fun of Baron Trump, the President Trump's son, and, and went off in a crazed fashion like that. It was embarrassing. And uh, she, she never really actually apologized for that. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, um, this is an independent forensic audit. The state Senate is in charge of it. They are responding to court orders, and, and so that, that's going on. And the Department of Justice has no authority uh, really to be in there. And, and for her to come in and try to stir this up based on some specious news account uh, seems absolutely um, beyond the pale right now. Uh, any observations on what has gone on so far that you can comment on? Uh, you're probably a well-connected uh, gentleman uh, in that area. I've been there. I've, I've taken a tour of the facility. There's adequate uh, uh, security personnel there. Uh, they have teams that are, that are vetted. They're reviewing ballots. They have uh, a lot of the software. They, they, the, uh, the auditors have requested certain... Uh, particular uh, machine routers, um, and they're not getting that back from the county or from Dominion Software, so there's a fight kind of going on there. Uh, it's going to be a while yet, but um, I'm hoping that, you know, that we get to the bottom of, of whatever went on. If it was, if it was pristine and, and, and pure and great, then fine, pristine, pure and great. If there was a problem, let's find out what the problem was. But the bottom line is we want election integrity. That is the, the most fundamental uh, institution in a free uh, a republic like ours is is the franchise and how is it protected we want to make sure that what went on was great and perfect as as we possibly could make it and uh and so uh, we don't need the doj sticking their nose in there what we need is a great uh, audit by these uh, auditors and let let the chips fall where they meet congressman thank you very much congressman andy biggs joining us thank you sir Thank you, Heather and Bob. Well, Thank more you. questions arising out of that election on it underway in Maricopa County, Arizona, after new allegations about things not adding up. That's some allegations. Are they true? We'll talk about some of the issues with Dick Morris, who joins us when we come back. And welcome back to American Agenda. I'm Heather Childers, along with Bob Sellers. Uh, we were just discussing this with Congressman Andy Biggs. Officials in uh, Maricopa County, Arizona, they're at odds with each other over the 2020 election audit. Now, the Arizona Senate president is reporting serious issues alleging missing ballots and some other issues as well. Uh, but the Board of Supervisors is fighting back and calling the allegations a sham both GOP. So uh, let's check in with our own White House correspondent, Emerald Robinson, for the latest out of D.C. Hi, Emerald. Hi, Heather. Well, it's almost a tale of two letters, right? Mm -hmm. We saw the letter from the Arizona Senate President Karen Fan last week, and now Maricopa County officials or the Board of Supervisors are answering back with their own letter that they sent yesterday. They actually put it out in the media, though, before they actually uh, sent it to the Arizona Senate. And I would say that the tone and the two letters are very different. Uh, last week, the Arizona Senate posed several questions to Maricopa County uh, in regards to what they say they found in the audit. And then yesterday, Maricopa County issuing a letter that was um, a little more incendiary. It, it referred to a sham audit with uh, amateur auditors, and it also um, had more insults in it. It did go point by point. It, in, in responding to the claims in the Arizona Senate letter, clearly the most explosive allegation in the uh, Arizona Senate letter was that the databases had been deleted prior to turning over the equipment. In that letter, it read, we have recently discovered that the entire database directory from the D drive of the machine EMS primary has been dis deleted. This removes election-related details that appear to have been covered by the subpoena. Now, in the answer letter from Maricopa County officials, they said, quote, you claim the entire database director from the D drive of the machine EMS primary has been deleted. This is false. 
uh, the database was not deleted from the server. Maricopa County officials went on to suggest uh, other uh, scenarios that could have happened, such as uh, uh, the software that was being used by the auditors not being able to read the files. Now, there's also the claim that uh, there is uh, ballot discrepancies in the box, saying that the ballot number of ballots in the box don't match the pink slip. Uh, the Maricopa County officials are also pushing back on that, saying that there are sometimes ballots that are damaged and can't be read by the electronic tabulators, and that is probably what happened there. Now, what happens next? So today, the Arizona Senate is holding a hearing. Um, they had asked the Maricopa County officials to appear in that hearing to answer the questions in person, to talk about the concerns of the Arizona Senate based on what they found so far in the audit. Now, Maricopa County officials are not going to show up, but that hearing is still going on. That's 1 p.m. Uh, Pacific time, 4 p.m. Eastern time uh, in the Arizona Senate. It is live stream. And I have talked to some people, you know, close to the Arizona Senate, and they say that they don't feel that in that letter, Maricopa County officials actually directly answered the questions. They still have concerns, and they plan to give an update in this uh, hearing today. Hmm. Heather, Bob. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Emerald. We'll be watching for sure. But let's talk a little bit more about this. Uh, joining us to discuss is former advisor to Presidents Clinton and Trump and host of Dick Morris Democracy right here on Newsmax, Dick Morris. So, Dick, no doubt you heard what Emerald was saying uh, just there in her report, bringing us up to speed. What are your thoughts? Well, first of all, that was a great report. It really covered everything very fairly. Uh, and I should note that no other TV network is covering this at all. Uh, it's the most significant audit of election results by any of the swing states. And it's by their state senate, not by some group. And uh, so it's very, very important as an issue. The area of the audit that I've been focusing on is that there are a thousand ballots that were contained in five boxes that were chosen at random. And on the slip on the top of the box, it said this box contains 200 ballots. But when you opened it up and counted it, it only had 180, 190. And all told over the five boxes, where there should have been 1,000 ballots, there were in fact only 452. I'm sorry, 952. So there were 45 ballots. 55, sorry. There were 45 ballots that were missing out of the 1,000, 4.5%. And uh, the question is, what happened to those ballots? Why were they missing? Now, the Maricopa, Maricopa Board of County Supervisors basically said, my dog ate them. <laughs> he said that, that the problem was that the ballots were defaced or somebody poured a drink on them, and they couldn't be tabulated by machine, and that they were sent to a special tabulation center, but the ballots are safe and sound. Take our word for it. And uh, this is a significant thing. It's 4.5% of the ballots. Maricopa County has 2 million voters, half of Arizona. So if 4.5% of those are missing, you're talking about 80 or 90,000, way more than the 10,000 Biden supposedly carried Arizona by. Mm. Now, the county well, board... Well, Dick, Dick if, I can, if I can ask you about that just a, a little bit, the extrapolating, um, certainly entitled to do it, it may be absolutely true, uh, but we don't know. The, the missing ballots may be, <clears throat> may be accounted for, and then extrapolating 4.5% to 2 million ballots... Um, it would be like there was a guy hit in the face last night by, by a pitch, by a fastball. And you, you could say, if you didn't know better, you'd say, well, that happens every game. And then every year you'd have 162 guys that were hit. Uh, but that, that's explainable and it's unusual. Maybe this uh, particular uh, batch where some uh, votes were missing is explainable, or maybe it's an anomaly and it doesn't uh, extrapolate out to 80,000 ballots or whatever. Yes, I understand that. And thanks for the lecture about statistics. <laughs> I appreciate it. Well, that. I think it's important that the, our um, people uh, keep well, that I'm, in I'm mind, just, Dick, because just, to make the allegations just that you're pollster. making, I want to make sure that our viewers Wait a minute, understand Bob, I didn't make any allegations. I did not make allegation. any allegations. Can I respond to you? Please. I did not make a single allegation. I said that 4.5% of the ballots... I said 4.5% of the ballots in these boxes were missing. I said that if that is the same over the 2,000, 2 million, it is a very significant omission. 
Then I gave you the explanation of the Maricopa County, that those ballots were defaced, that the the dog drinks spilled them? on them. Yeah, I, I said that, yeah, or drink spilled on them, yeah. Uh, that kind of excuse. And they said that, that, uh, that, that the ballots were safe and sound uh, and that they were not missing, take our word for it. And that's the current state of play. Now, I'm not saying that this is an extrapolation you can make. I'm merely pointing out that 45 ballots is not an insignificant number. And in terms of the issue of projections, Bob, unlike you, I'm a pollster. And I've uh, dealt with these statistics for 40 years. And I know when a sample can be extrapolated and when it can't be. And I believe that a sample of 45 ballots from five boxes chosen at random from a base of about 1,000 voters in a state of about two, a county of about 2 million voters. While it can't be extrapolated, it certainly suggests an order of magnitude. And that is all I meant to suggest. And I'm very surprised you didn't get that. Yeah. Well, and in the state of Arizona, though, we should just say and remind everyone that the difference uh, between Biden and Trump was just a little over 10,000 votes. So when we talk right. about these minute numbers, if it adds up, I mean, there's not a large number that it needs to add up to. I do want to get your response, though, to this, Dick. Uh, this is the Republican Maricopa County supervisor uh, saying this about the allegations. We overturned every stone, and we have professionals, both with the early voting and the election day voting. They did everything right. We asked the difficult questions. But now it's time to say enough is enough. It is time to push back on the big lie. So, Dick, my question would be, listening to that, why not just go to that meeting today that Emerald was talking about yeah. and answer some of these questions? Yeah, why not? Why, why not? Uh, they should go and they should answer. I should point out, because you're maybe not familiar with the intricacies of Arizona politics, mm -hmm. the uh, Board of Supervisors is four to one Republican. But the driving force in the board, according to Kelly Ward, the Arizona Republican chairman, is that is the driving force is a guy named Ray Torres, who is a lifelong Democrat, who's been called out for being a lifelong Democrat. People have questioned whether he belongs in the significant post that he has now. And the Republican Party in the state and in the country, not in the Board of Supervisors of Mariscova County, says that, uh, that the, this is basically a board echoing what its bureaucracy is telling it to do. And when I hear them, when this is the first audit that's ever been conducted in a swing state that goes ballot by ballot, that we've heard all the charges, isn't it time for us to put everything away and let bygones be bygones and assume that this election was on the up and up, uh, I think is uh, premature. All right, fair enough. Thank you very much, Dick Morris. Thank you, Dick. When it comes to the election last year, ignore the conspiracy theories, the wacky stories, and stick to the facts, and stick to finding out the truth about stories. The mainstream lying legacy media does not wish to cover. For this segment, I have invited my former White House colleague, former special assistant to President Trump, former strategic advisor to the Trump campaign, who was fighting the fight on the ground during and after the election, Boris Epstein. Welcome to Stinchfield. Sebastian, great to be with you. Thank you so much for having me, my good friend. As always, not only a friend, but co-host of our podcast, The Battle for 1600. Yes. Boris, um, can you tell us why this audit is so significant and what the strange uh, signs of resistance are from local officials and especially the Democrat Party? Well, Sebastian, that's exactly right. There's been so much resistance to this audit in Maricopa County. Maricopa County makes up about 65% of the ballots in Arizona. The state Senate back in December requested a full audit, which is a recount and recanvas of about 2.1 million ballots. So they're recounting the ballots, and then they're going to determine whether the ballots actually came from real voters. That's a recanvas. And ever since... This audit got through the legal challenges. There has been an unbelievable offensive against it from 
Democrats in Arizona, Democrats nationwide, the mainstream media, of course, big tech, but also rhino Republicans who make up the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors, which oversees the elections in the county. Even t today, there was a hearing at, of the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors where they addressed very specific concerns pointed out by the Arizona State Senate President Karen Fan. These concerns rise from about 20% of the recount being done so far, and they laid out three things, non-compliance with the subpoenas, missing ballots, and a, a removed database, which was the results and process database. Well, what came out of today's hearing was about a 14-page letter that gave no answers, went in depth, tried to mis mislead anybody reading it, but gave no answers. And now, Tomorrow, there's a hearing in front of the state Senate where they invited the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors. And guess what? You'd think that if they had not, nothing to hide, the supervisors would show up and answer questions. But they're refusing. They're not, they're not going to show up tomorrow at 1 o'clock local, 4 o'clock Eastern, at the hearing in front of the Arizona State Senate. And there potentially could be subpoenas flying to make them show up. Why would you not show up if you don't have anything to hide? You were there. You fought valiantly. You have legal background, legal training. You've worked on multiple campaigns. Somebody else who's on the front lines as well is the former attorney general of Kansas, Phil Klein, who's now the head of the Army Star Project, looking into all of the election irregularities. Yes. And he, Phil Klein, was on my radio show today, and he said, these are the two things we have to fix, and I want your response. Play cut. It's, it's two things. It's prohibiting private money to purchase local election officials. And secondly, it's state legislatures. Yeah. And it's making them responsible for the constitutional authority granted to them by the Constitution. That's what the courts were saying. They weren't saying there wasn't fraud. They were saying this is not our role. Where is the state legislature? They have to step up. And we've got a proposal, and we're going to push it next year, and that is that the legislature have a standing committee. That committee have subpoena investigatory power that it must meet during and after the election and issue a report that indicates whether the election was done lawfully. If not, where were the laws broken? Do those laws impact the validity of the result? And should the election be certified? And that it be transparent and open to the public. So, so two things, Boris. You've got to have a special committee during the election time with subpoena power that can exercise the authority of the legislature to make sure that things are transparent. And then the first one, perhaps the biggest, if you look at the fact that Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook's owner, dropped right. almost half a billion dollars to train local officials. These are the two things the former attorney general of Kansas thinks have to be fixed. Do you agree? Is there anything missing? Those are very, very important, no doubt about it. What's missing, the bigger picture is this. During this 2020 election, as we know from the Time Magazine article where they took a victory lap, the Democrats did two very simple things they've been that. doing for a long time. They've been increasing the amount of ballots and they've been gutting the checks. So we have to make sure, Phil Klein's second point, what we have to make sure is, go, is to go deeper, to ensure that there are checks on mail balloting. About 90% of the ballots cast in Maricopa County were early ballots. Who knows what kind of checks applied? We know in Pennsylvania and Allegheny, Philadelphia County, there were no checks. We know that in Wisconsin, Milwaukee, Dane counties, over 200,000 unlawful ballots under Wisconsin law were cast and counted in an election in Wisconsin where the difference was 20,000 votes between President Trump and Joe Biden. So what we need to have is we need to gain control over these mail ballot processes, and then we have to institute checks to make sure that the ballots are legal. And again, it's all about every legal ballot counting. Those are the key issues. And I do agree with Phil Klein that the article, the article two of the Constitution leaves it directly to state legislatures to regulate elections. And that was violated time and time and time again in the 2020 election. Thank you, Boris.
This Thank story you. has only just begun. It was an eventful day in Phoenix today, though. Much of Washington and the mainstream media essentially brushed off the official Senate sanctioned Arizona election audit. Well, you know, it was a notable day as much as for what did not happen as for what did happen that's in Arizona. That's right, Steve. Well, what did happen is this. Officials in Maricopa County, Arizona, they're at odds with each other over this 2020 election audit. But the situation has a much larger potential significance. Yeah, it absolutely does. You know, question authority. There was a time, patriots, when that phrase was a driving principle of the left. Well, today, the skeptics of government power can be found almost exclusively on the political right. Now, regarding the 2020 presidential election, the corporate media, they're crystal clear that any investigation into the returns of these battleground states, any audit of these results, well, that's forbidden. But here's the reality. There are problems with the way elections were conducted in some of these swing states. Many used COVID as an excuse, a beard, if you will, to abuse standards of election integrity. Now, thankfully, Arizona, they are taking these irregularities very seriously. And the state Senate there launched an official, detailed forensic audit of the returns from Maricopa County. That county, Maricopa, has become a crucial swing jurisdiction in American electoral politics. Donald Trump won Maricopa back in 2016, and it was a key linchpin to him winning the Grand Canyon state as a whole. In 2020, according to the official count, he lost Maricopa by a mere 45,000 votes out of a total of over 2 million votes counted in that gigantic county. It provided the totality actually times about four, the totality of Biden's win in Arizona. He won the state overall by a thin 11,000 vote margin. Maricopa stands out uh, like so many parts of Biden's election math. It stands out as an anomaly. It's the fourth biggest county in America. It is urban, diverse, and it's fast growing. Now, in similar counties elsewhere, Trump improved upon his 2016 totals, and in terms of margin percentage, dramatically so in many of these places. President Trump gained in other large counties, like Los Angeles County, Cook County in Illinois, and Houston's Harris County, even though those are heavily Democratic areas. So why was Maricopa the outlier? Did Trump just happen to underperform in this crucial vote? Look, it is possible, of course. But as somebody who's poured over the data the way I have, Maricopa really stands out. And it stands out not just to me, but also to the elected Senate of the state of Arizona, which commissioned a full audit, one that is ongoing. Now, today, the officials of Maricopa County, they refuse to show up for a legal hearing called by the Arizona Senate. Subpoenas are very likely to come next. Now, if this audit uncovers no real issues, then we should fully accept the results. But the officials of Maricopa County Democrats and Republican, they're making that process incredibly difficult, especially today. State Senate President Karen Fan, she wrote those no-show commissioners of the county last week about their non-compliance, stating that there are, quote, omissions, inconsistencies, and anomalies relating to Maricopa County's handling, organization, and storage of ballots. Senator Fan also revealed, and I'm quoting, a significant number of instances in which there is a disparity between the actual number of ballots contained in a batch and the total denoted on the pink report slip accompanying the batch. Now, for more on these problems about the ballot batches, let's get to a chalk talk. From Senator Fan's letter, this is what we know, and this is, these are just some of the examples of the important discrepancies. And I list here the pallets, as well as the reported totals, for example, in pallet five, a reported total in one batch of 200 votes. The actual total, 165 votes, meaning it is off in percentage terms by 17.5%. Now, you might be saying to yourself, hey, Cortez, these are pretty small numbers, and that is true. These are small sample sizes. However, if they hold true for the far larger sample size of the vote in Maricopa on the whole, this can be incredibly consequential. These kinds of numbers, 17%, 5%, 6.5%. The reason I say that, I'm getting funky with the board here. I haven't done this before, folks. Erasing and replacing on the board. The reason I say that is that the vote total for the whole state of Arizona is only 0.05% differential. My point there is there is not much of a differential at all that would potentially overturn the entire vote in that state. 
Now, also, uh, this is an important point, Patriots. If the vote in Arizona was as clean and as accurate as Biden claims, then they should fully encourage transparency. Why not assist this audit and cooperate? After all, this weekend's CBS poll proves that millions of Americans do not accept the results of 2020, with a supermajority of Republicans responding that Biden did not actually win. 67% say that. Now, shouldn't Biden, more than anyone, welcome the kind of investigation that can persuade those masses of deplorables that he won cleanly? Wouldn't he actually want that outcome? Jen, I think the proof is in the pudding. Transparency would be the hallmark of a candidate who is confident that he won clean. Yeah, I, th I think you're absolutely right, Steve. That, that would make a huge difference, uh, certainly in the eyes of voters as well. So many of them have lost confidence in the, in the elections after what happened in 2020, and I think that would be uh, certainly a game changer if uh, Biden were to say, yes, let's go forward with this. We've got nothing to hide. So joining us now to discuss this is former advisor to Presidents Clinton and Trump and host of Dick Morris Democracy right here on Newsmax, Dick Morris. Dick, great to have you with us tonight. Whenever I hear your name, Jen, I get thirsty. I love Pellegrino. <laughs> <laughs> we'll bring you some this, water. This, however, is Dick, just water, I'm... but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the best water. Well, I've got a question for you, Dick. You know, that 67% that Steve pointed out of, of Americans that said in the CBS poll they, they've lost confidence in the election. They feel like Joe Biden uh, did not win the election. You know, will these processes that we're seeing play out here in Maricopa County as well as other states that have tried to go through, through the audit, will that restore the confidence of voters as they look to have confidence in 2022 and beyond? Well, that depends on how the two parties play it. The way the Democrats are playing it is not designed to build confidence. Uh, they're running around screaming, stop this audit, stop it. In fact, the letter that the Senate president sent to the Maricopa County Board elicited a cry of, this is undermining confidence in our democracy, pull the plug on the audit. And uh, the Democrats have been so defensing this audit ever since it was ordered by the Senate. The, these are, this is a renegade audit by amateurs that don't understand the political process. This is a setup, and so on and so on. And all it is is a regular recount of the ballot. The audit did originally include going door to door to ask people if they're still alive and still live here and indeed voted. But uh, that was held to be intimidating to minorities. So they agreed to drop that. Uh, but they're going through the paperwork and rather closely. And I think those disparities you were pointing out, Steve, are of tremendous importance. Now, Maricopa County says, we took 1,000 voters in these five batches, 200 each, and we found 45 ballots missing in the audit. Maricopa says, oh, those 45 ballots were defaced, a drink got spilled on them, they were smudged, they couldn't really be read by the machine, so we held them aside for in-person counting. I always say, that's like my dog ate it. <laughs> and, and I think that that, that process uh, is one that needs to continue, and we need to understand how those people voted, and whether those names were pulled out of the hat because they were votes for Trump or because they were, in fact, defaced. Uh, I have a very cute story for you, by the way. When I worked for Clinton, I uh, was subpoenaed to appear before the grand jury uh, at one point about the uh, work we did in the campaign for uh, running ads. And they said, bring the hard drive to your computer. And I'd left the campaign. They had the hard drive, so I had them FedEx it to me. And it arrived in my door, and it's a big glittering package. And my dog, in fact, ate it. <laughs> <laughs> I, so I, it actually I had to bring happened. it into the. Actually, <laughs> no it. I brought it. the machine which had been Dick, chewed apart into the grand I, I jury, ask, and I said, "I don't eat machines." <laughs> <laughs> Dick, I want to ask you about the returns. Uh, the, the point that I mentioned that generally Donald Trump did better in 2020 than he did in 2016 in urban areas, in Maricopa-like areas. He did substantially better among Hispanics, and of course, Maricopa is heavily Hispanic. Yep. For example, in Los Angeles County, he gained a half million raw votes in Los Angeles County, the largest county in America. He also gained 4% on margin. Do you have any explanation for why he would have so underperformed in Maricopa relative to those other places? Well, we'll look at what happens with the audit, but you're completely correct. Trump 
scored a huge victory last in, last year among Latinos. Uh, my show, Democracy, that I'm airing at 7.30 Saturday night and 1 o'clock Sunday afternoon is all devoted to that. And uh, we talk about how uh, for years, for 10 years, the Republicans said, you got to support guaranteed immigration, you got to support amnesty, you got to support reform, otherwise you'll get wiped out among Latinos. And Trump said, no, I'm not doing any of that. I'm building a wall, and I'm going to enforce right. the law. And now he gained eight points among Latinos, just absolutely wiped out Biden's lead among Latinos. A group that was supposed to be Democrat for the next hundred years indicated that really is flipping and that the Democrats are wrong in saying that these people are coming in and are all going to vote Democrat. They aren't. And you know why? That's the conclusion of my show, but I'll tip you off. They're patriots. They came to this country voluntarily. They voted with their feet to be Americans. And therefore, when they see America being torn down by these Antifa crowds, they get angry and they voted for Donald Trump. Dick, it's estimated that the results of this audit will be available in, uh, in I think, late June of this year. Um, what do you think those results are going to tell us, perhaps, about other states in terms of uh, how their elections were handled? It's important that we realize that there are two parts to any of these audits. One is the voting machines, and the other is the paper ballots. The voting machines were run by Dominion Software, largely, and I frankly don't understand enough about computers to make a judgment about that. But I sure understand paper ballots. And you, and I think that the uh, potential for forgery, uh, the potential for ballots to be misread, uh, the potential for the voters to have been coached in giving the ballot, and the pressure that was on these election officials not to nullify ballots. Back then, the whole rap was you're suppressing the minority vote by nullifying ballots for minor technical errors. Stop doing it. And as a result, the number Dick of ballots that were thrown out, paper ballots, is a tenth of what it usually is. Secretary, real quick, your reaction to this, uh, this open letter from 120-plus retired generals and admirals signed an open letter this week questioning the legitimacy of the 2020 presidential election. On a personal level, what this year and a half has done to me as an American, mm. do you, uh, what I'm about to say, I, I could cry saying to you, I have lost faith in every major institution in this country. I think they're all lying to me every day, all the time. The FBI, the CIA, the CDC, the NIH, you name it, they lie. I've already known this about the media. But I, I actually thought that the FBI and the CIA were honorable institutions. I, I thought that the top military brass really cared about the defense of the country and, and not about being woke. But it, 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 uh, a, a sort of sheet Dennis, has been removed. Dennis.